In this lesson, we'll be looking at patterns in tables of values to determine what type of function it is. And also we'll be starting to write exponential functions based on the table of values. At the top of this page, you can see some parent functions. One is linear, one quadratic, and one exponential. And in the linear function, the x is to the first power, quadratic, it's to the second power, and in exponential, the x is actually the exponent itself. And we're going to be looking at some patterns to lead into this exponential function, which is something we haven't seen yet in this course, in my previous videos. So if you have a table of values, you can try to look for patterns in the table values to tell you what type of function it is. Depending on the iteration where the constant rate of change occurs kind of tells you what ha what's happening. So in this first table, this one's pretty easy to see. We're adding three every time in the y values and we're adding one every time in the x values. It's got a constant rate of change when you look at it right off the bat. And this is called a linear function. The equation for this is found by the slope, which is the change in y over the change in x, plus the y-intercept, which in this case is zero. In the next example, we can see that something's being added every time, but it's not so straightforward as the first example. So we know we're adding two, six, 10, 14, and 18, and then we're adding one on the x's. This is not a constant rate of change, but if I go one more iteration, I can see that those are going up four <clears throat> every time. Since the constant rate of change occurred in the second iteration, this is a quadratic. And if we, oh, I'll just finish this one. The equation of this would be, we can kind of play around with it a little bit. Uh, we've got, let's see, if I did one squared, that would be one. So that's not it. Two squared would be four. Three squared would be nine. Maybe you can start to see a pattern emerging here. We are taking x squared, but we're multiplying it by something to get these values. And that rate of change in this case is going to be two times x squared. I mentioned that since in the second iteration, that's where we saw the rate of change. So that meant it was a quadratic because it was a two, the second iteration. If we had one like this, for example, and I look at the change in y, and I look at the change in X, there's not really, there's not a constant rate of change. If I go one step further, uh, <laughs> nope, that's not right, 18. There's still not a constant rate of change, but if I go even one step further than that, in the third iteration is where the constant rate of change is occurring, which means that it's going to be x to the third. And that is one to the third, two to the third, three to the third, and so on. So you can see that that checks out. Pretty cool, right? In the last type of function, um, we don't start with zero here we start with a one, and then if you try to see a pattern going on with the y values, we're no longer adding. Now to get to the next y value, we can multiply by two. Multiply two all the way down on the y's, but we are still just going up one on the x values. Since the constant rate of change is found by multiplication, this is called an exponential function. Exponents at their very, at the very basic, exponents are just um, multiplication. 
it's the number of times that the base is being multiplied. So it would make sense that the constant rate of change would come from multiplication. And then we can come up with an equation for this by kind of playing around with some numbers. If I did one to the first, that's two, two squared, three, sorry, two to the third, two to the fourth, two to the fifth. So my base is two and the X value is now part of the exponent. And we end up with two to the X. Two to the zero is one, two to the first is two, two squared, two to the third, two to the fourth, and so on. So this base is coming from the change factor or the rate of change. And then the X is in the exponent because it's an exponential function. Every function, no matter what type of function it is, will have an initial value and a rate of change. So this initial value was a one we don't necessarily see a one. Normally we would see it maybe added on. The y-intercept is usually added on, but in an exponential function, the rules are changed a little bit. There's no one out here, but there is a one in the equation. We just don't see it. So let's go down a little bit further to see if we can figure out where that's coming from. In this first example, we're just gonna state some things that we can see. The initial value, that's referring to the y-intercept. The initial value is two. And then the change factor, that's referring to a rate of change, but for exponential functions. Because instead of adding, we're multiplying, so it would make sense that we would use the word factor instead. We could do times three, times three, times three. So we can see that it's changing by a factor of three every time. So we would write this equation. Let's go back up. I mentioned that the y-intercept is kind of hidden in this equation. If we go up and look at the parent function of an exponential equation, we can see that B, the base, that came from our change factor. We already knew that because we found it from the table. So by process of elimination, what do you think A might represent? If it's not the change factor, it's now the y-intercept or initial value. So we can use that down here where the equation is the initial value times the change factor to the x. Now you might be wondering, where did she get that? Where did that come from? How could you even see that from there? Let's look at the table of values to help us figure out where, where that's coming from. I know that the change factor is three. I know that it is because that's from the table. So that's gonna be my base three to the first hmm, is not six. So I need something else. Three squared is not 18, but it's close. Three to the third is not 54. And by close, I mean, it's not close numerically, but it's close as in I can multiply it by something to make it be that. Three to the first is three times what is six? Two. Three squared is nine times what is 18? Two. Three to the third is 27 times two is 54. So this initial value becomes part of the equation because we have to multiply everything by that initial value to make it be the bigger number basically. So two is our initial value and three is our change factor. Let's look at the next equation. And I want you to pause it and try to see if you can find the change factor by looking at the 
table of values. Hopefully you found that we are multiplying by two every, every time. So we know that's a change factor. We can also see from the table our initial value. Then if we use this information to help us write an equation, we know that the change factor is the base. So we know that two to the zero is one. So we're not quite there. Two to the first is two. Two squared is four which means that we need to be multiplying by something to make these y values. Since I know that the base is two because I know the change factor is two, that means I have to multiply by something in order to make three or make six. In this case, we'll be multiplying by three. 2 to the first is 2 times 3 is 6. 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12, which comes from this initial value. So we're starting at 3, and then we're increasing by 2 each time. Not really starting at 3 because it's infinite, goes on in both directions. But for the sake of um, <laughs> y-intercept, basically. So we write that 3 times 2 to the x. And that's your equation. Last example, go ahead and try it. See if you can get the equation from the table of values and then come back and check. This one's really neat because it's a little bit different. Instead of increasing like all the other examples, they're decreasing. So it's going down which means that I'm gonna be multiplying by a fraction instead. Or you might've seen, oh, we divide by two, divide by two, divide by two, but we don't say divide by two because that's not, that's not how you uh, find a change factor for exponential functions. Division is actually just multiply, multiplication of fractions. So what's actually happening is we're multiplying by a half each time. So this change factor is definitely a half. One half to the zero is one times something is four. One half to the first is one half times something is two. So that four is coming from that initial value. And our equation is four times one half to the X. So if we look back, these were increasing as X got bigger, the Y values were also getting bigger. These were increasing. And this is an, uh, an example of growth, exponential growth. In this example, the Y values were decreasing as X got bigger. So this was an example of decay. And these two types of functions are going to have a different graph. So if we look at the equation of an exponential function, uh, we'll use this first one, three times two raised to the X, hit graph, we can see that when we're going from left to right that the function is increasing. So it's got exponential growth. Now, if I change my change, or if I change my change factor, if I adjust my change factor to um, a half, for example, I'll change this to four to stay consistent and look at the graph. Now, when I go left to right, it's falling, which indicates decay. And you can see from the graph that the initial value, that y-intercept is four, and then there's a change factor of a half. So per value, per x value, it's halving. That's all I have for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know and I'd be happy to help. See you in the next one.